Hello and welcome to tonight's homework help for Wednesday night, December 5th, 2012. We're going to jump right in with equivalent ratios. Okay, um, uh, all of these have us use the process of cross multiplication or uh, it's also called cross product. Okay, um, you'll also notice in the videos, I believe, that we watch next week, they refer to it as uh, the uh, means and extremes method, but we'll refer to it as cross product or cross multiplication. Uh, anyways, um, all of these problems, uh, this one has you prove that this ratio is equivalent to that ratio, so you'll get an, a, a, a true statement on this one. Um, uh, this one uh, has you do the same over here. This one you has you do use cross multiplication to show that they are not actually equivalent. Okay, so you'll get a uh, false statement, something like three equals four, um, but it probably have different figures than three and four. Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, this one used cross multiplication to determine if uh, one ninth is equivalent to three thirds. So in this third set of problems here, we don't know if they are or are not equivalent. Um, so we have to figure that out on our own. And then, so you'll do the same process as the other two sets, the other four problems above. But here you'll want to write if they are equivalent or if they are not equivalent, uh, depending on. Uh, what your results are. If you get a true statement, then that means they're equivalent. If you get a false statement, then it means they're not equivalent. Okay, um, and then here it says identify a ratio that is equivalent to 5 eighths. Use cross multiplication to prove they're equal. And then identify a ratio that is not equivalent to 5 eighths and use cross multiplication to prove they're not equal. So all of these use the similar process. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create um, uh, I'm going to identify a ratio that is equivalent to 5 eighths and then prove that it is equivalent. So uh, I'm going to take 5 eighths, and I have been helping students with this already, and I tell them to pick a number between uh, 1 and 5. Uh, I had one student pick a 3, so he said, well, then you're going to multiply top and bottom by 3. That means that you'll get 15 over 24. So then we're going to compare, um, we're going to compare 5 eighths to 15 over 24. And we're going to find the cross product to find out if they are indeed uh, equivalent, which they should be, okay? Because I multiplied top and bottom by the same number to get that number. Um, so uh, what I have here is I have 5 times 24 on one side equal to 8 times 15 on the other side. And so 5 times 24 is, uh, let's see, 5 times 20 is 100, and 5 times 4 is 20, so that should be 120. And on the right side, I get 8 times 10 is 80, plus 8 times 5 is 40, 80 plus 40 is 120. So indeed, we get 120 equals 120. I just box, box that in and put a check mark to show that they are actually indeed equivalent, okay? Um, uh, here, uh, identify a ratio that is not equivalent to 5 eighths, I would just change the value. You could change that to a 25, you could change that to a 14 or something, and then just compare 5 eighths to your new ratio that you, that you change just one of these numbers slightly, or both of them slightly, um, and there's really no chance that it'll be equivalent to. And then when you do the cross multiplication, you'll get a statement that is untrue, you know, something like 100 and 25 equals 113 or something like that, which is not true, and that'll show that it's not uh, equivalent. Uh, other than that, this whole cross-multiplication process is what you do for all of these problems, the six problems above here, as well as these two problems, and that's the theme that we're learning today. Uh, now let's go ahead and move on to the other side. Okay, here we are on the other side, sponsored walk. Um, so students at the Mountain View Elementary School do a sponsored walk. Jack is sponsored $6 for each lap. Bill is sponsored $4 for each lap. Jack and Bill each do five laps. How much money do Jack and Bill raise in all? Show your work. So I'd create one column of Jack and I'd show how you calculate $6 per lap at five laps for Jack. Then I'd do one for Bill. And I calculate bills, how much bill earns at $4 per lap, also for five laps. So then you get a total for Jack and a total for Bill. If you add those together, that'll equal the total, 
how much money Jack and Bill raised in all. Okay, so show your work down here. On number two, Maria does um, six laps. Okay, so Maria does six laps. She raises thirty dollars. How much for each lap was she sponsored? And show how you figured it out. So here I would use that R times T equals output, um, and our output would be thirty dollars. And uh, we don't know what a rate is, we don't know what R is, but our time, instead of being actual time, it would be six laps. So it would be R times six equals 30. Well, then you have to solve for the variable R by dividing both sides by six. So you end up dividing 30 by six and put your, putting your answer there. You're gonna show your work over here. Then it finally says Sarah wants to raise at least $20. So she can raise more, but not less. She's sponsored for $3 each lap. So you want to figure out what is the least number of whole laps she must walk. So what is the, as long as she walks this many laps, how will she earn at least $20? She can earn more, that's fine, but you want to get as close to 20 as you can without being under 20. So if you get 19 or 18, that's not enough. If you get 20, great. If you don't get 20, but say you get 21 or 22, that's good, okay? So she sponsored $3 for each lap. How many laps is she gonna to have to do to earn more than $20, okay? So you, f you write that number here, and then you explain in English sentence, complete English sentences, how you figured that out, okay? Uh, if you have any further questions, feel free to call or text either Mr. Supper or myself. Good night, good luck, and go Bears! Rawr!